We are Andy, Melissa, Jack and Oliver. For the past three years we've been working towards becoming a full-time liveaboard sailing family. Last month we finally moved aboard our Bowman 46 Ocean Melody, an ocean-going blue water classic yacht from 1974 which we found neglected in a yard for 10 years and have been bringing her back to life. We've now moved aboard and achieved our first goal of becoming full-time liveaboards and we're currently preparing Ocean Melody to set off on a very slow sail to everywhere and nowhere. In this week's episode I make a whole load more progress for the stainless steel framework for the cockpit enclosure. I cut the forward legs down to length, notch and tack weld them in place ready for TIG welding and make a telescopic section which extends aft to give cover to the helm. It's been a really funny week weather-wise and there's been heavy downpours of rain pretty much every day on and off so it's been pretty hard to get anything done outdoors, especially welding work. But I do need to get the rest of the framework done for this cockpit enclosure because winter is rapidly approaching and we need to get that that's kind of a cover done don't we so the next step for me in that process is to cut the lengths of tube to the new leg lengths because obviously with the top frame further back the legs are slightly longer so I've got to make new legs out of what we've got left of the tube um, so I'm going to mark them here and then I think I'm going to take them somewhere else to notch and uh, to actually cut and notch mm -hmm. where we're up to. All the legs are now in. There's a couple more things I need to do. Let me just show you where we're up to. We've got the main two legs at the back sat on the copper combings. We've got this which is kind of but this lovely curve here kind of borders out the end of the the sweeping bend so it sweeps around and then sweeps up. Um, the screen is at a much more attractive aesthetically pleasing angle. And then there's this bit. So all of this let me explain something. A lot of people commented on the corners of the solar panels being a death trap. There's going to be a roof on this. <laughs> it's not, these aren't going to stick out like this. I think I did mention it, but perhaps if you were one of those wondering, perhaps you'd missed that bit in the episode. The whole of this is going to have a fiberglass top, a solid fiberglass top, which is going to act as a water catcher. And for it to do that, the roof is going to be 10 mil ish bigger than the solar panels and come out to about here all the way around. It's going to provide a fiddle, like a hand grip, so when you're walking down the side deck you've got something really sturdy to grab hold of. 
Uh, I'm in talks with a company called Matrix Solutions, which are, um, do fiberglass and resins and all of that stuff. And I'm also in talks with Matt from Duracell Project about how to make the roof of this thing. If you don't know about Duracell Project, you should really check the channel out. Matt is a shipwright and fiberglass expert who is doing the most insane renovation of an Ocean 60 sailing yacht called Duracell. I say renovation rather than restoration because he isn't taking the boat back to its original spec. He's completely redesigning huge portions of the vessel. Keeping the incredible hull, but changing the depth of the keel to allow for cruising rather than racing. Changing the whole cockpit and aft end and building an incredible pilot house. So if you think my little efforts to make a cockpit enclosure are extreme or ambitious, honestly, you need to just look at the incredible work that Matt's doing. Now, we've known Matt since they launched the channel and had just a few subscribers. And even then, I recognised the depth of his knowledge and skills. So I was delighted when he came on board with us to be our advisor in the fibreglassing stage, which is coming up soon. A few months ago, we had a great chat with Matt, and what you're seeing now is the screen capture I made of our conversation, but when I came to edit this, it turned out I didn't capture the audio, which is a shame. In any case, just to clarify, the whole cockpit enclosure will have a fiberglass roof which comes out just slightly wider than the solar panels, so that the panels and people's heads will be protected. That roof section will have a fiddle around the edge which will act as a grab handle. It will also act as a rain catcher, and the rest of the enclosure, including the telescopic part above the helm seat, will be made of canvas with transparent plastic windows, which can be rolled up or down or removed completely for airflow. And then what about this back section? As you can see now, we've got loads of clearance for the uh, main sheet, so that's not a problem. Um, the way that we've designed this is, the st you can stand at the helm and there's six foot two of headroom. So if you're a six foot two person, you can stand at the helm and you've got loads of clearance. But if you stand on this seat, you can look over the top because we have our dinghy on the foredeck, which means you sometimes need a better view if you're approaching a, a pickup buoy or you're um, coming into a berth. You sometimes need a view of the bow. So being able to stand on that seat and look over the top. But we still want to have cover for the helm position when, um, when we're sailing under normal circumstances and this is how we're going to do it. I have made two of these right, which are 28 mil stainless steel 316 marine grade tube that sleeves inside the existing framework like so. It's cutting a bit shorter. And then in between them will be a longer bar. Look, so this section is telescopic. Now let me show you. Standing at the helm, I've got this much headroom. Look, loads, loads and loads and loads. It's probably more than six foot two. And most of the time there'll be a fabric panel in this section and fabric around here if we want it. It'll all press stud on and zips and Velcro. Like you. But this will have a Velcro and fabric section with a window in it so that I can see the top of the mast. So fabric, but with polythene, plastic kind of stuff. And this whole section, if we want to, I can either unpop the poppers and take that whole section completely out and stand up on the seat and look over the top. But if I really want to, I can slide the whole thing forwards like that. And now we've got lovely rounded corners that nobody's going to hit their head on. We've got a grab handle. I can hold this. I can still steer. And that then is a little bit stiff at the moment, so it'll take a bit of working. There we go. So that then enables me to pull that back out. So I can pull it back out to stand at the helm, remove the piece of plastic and fabric and canvas, look over the top, pop the fabric back on, or zip it or velcro it back on to get cover over the cockpit so that when you're sat here at the helm, you've got complete cover. You can sit on the combings and look out down the side. Uh, either side, it's fine. And you can sit on the helm seat, you can stand at the helm with plenty of headroom and loads of protection, or you can stand on the seat and look over the top. And if this does get in the way on a downwind leg, we can just slide it away. It's fully telescopic. So, I hope that makes sense. All I need now is for Nigel to come back and do this TIG welding because I've sticked it, no, I've knitted it together and it needs digging together. 
So, right, in other news, you've probably noticed that uh, Melissa and Jack and Ollie aren't here this week. That's because they've gone away to a homeschool camping weekend thing, which has got um, woodcraft skills and, and all that kind of amazing stuff. So they're having an amazing time, uh, which does mean that I've been able to get on with some of the more grinding, nasty, noisy metalwork that disturbs Ollie and he really doesn't like it. So although it would have been nice to go with them and go camping, um, it's been kind of handy to let me get on with this stuff. So that's why they've not been in this episode. What else has happened? We've had a meeting with a Christian from CJ, CJ Marine. Uh, following on from last week's video about our roller reefing, uh, Christian came down from CJ Marine. Uh, we had a great session going through all of the roller reefing setup. He's going to come here in a couple of weeks uh, and do our four stay with me partly so that I know it's been done properly because it's been done by a proper professional rigger and partly so that I've got an idea, I'm, I've already got a reasonable idea how it works, but if I've, I've never done one. So doing the job with a rigger means that we can then do the maintenance ourselves on our rig. Uh, we will be replacing all of our standing rigging as well at some point, although we just we can't afford that at the minute. So just be the force day for the time being. So that's the roller reefing is gonna be set up turns out CJ is also, um, they do uh, it, uh, the, all the canvas work. So Melissa and I, and probably more Melissa than me, are going to go down to CJ's workshop uh, and do all of the canvas work for the cockpit enclosure under their uh, tutelage and instruction. Uh, and again, Melissa's pretty handy with a sewing machine, but it never hurts to get kind of expert advice and, and learn from somebody who does this all day, every day. And when we were looking at this with him, some of the stuff that he was saying was like, yeah, we'll do this here and this here and this here. And I was thinking, oh, th we would never have thought of that. So no matter how good you are with the sewing machine, having made lots and lots and lots and lots of cockpit enclosures, you've got things in your head that somebody that's doing it for the first time just won't think of. So that's really exciting. I've also spoken to Danny. Do you remember Danny and Spud that did the welding on the underneath of Steel Melody's keel? Now, this episode was going to have some Steel Melody work in it, uh, but I've spoken to Danny and um, he's c coming either later this coming week or the, or the next week, depending on the weather and his availability, to finish off the very last bits of welding on Steel Melody, which means I need to get my backside over there and do some tidying up because a lot of the stuff that came out of the house, uh, a lot of the stuff is just woodwork and panelling which, which needs to come off the bunks and onto the walls and, uh, you know, things that, that belong to Steel Melody that have been in our garage for years and years. So that's really exciting. So we've got roller reefing coming up, we've got stack pack with CJ coming up up for our precision sales mainsail we've got the canvas work for the um, uh, for the cockpit enclosure and matrix so yes I mentioned them earlier I've got a phone call tomorrow today is Sunday so I've got a phone call tomorrow with the guys of matrix who are going to supply all of the fiberglass and the cloth and the resins for me to uh, make the cockpit roof uh, and we're yet to decide exactly how we're going to go on about that. Sorry, I'm rambling a little bit. I don't normally talk this long to camera. It's just there's quite a lot to get in. Roller reefing's on the way. Canvas work for the stack packs on the way. Canvas work for the cockpit enclosures on the way. Fiberglass for the fiberglass roof is on the way. Um, welding the final little bits on steel melody is on the way. All of that is booked. We've spoken to the people and we're making arrangements for them to come on specific days uh, and uh, to do that stuff. Whew, right. It's time to finish the episode. Thank you so, 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 so much for watching. Here's the patrons. As always, they're amazing. And uh, we've had a couple of visits from patrons recently. Uh, and it, uh, we're always glad to see you. I'm, I'm sorry if I'm not always able to just down tools and invite you on the boat. But if you contact me, patrons, beforehand and let me know with a day's notice, you're welcome to come for a coffee. Please, and please do, please do. If you're ever visiting North Wales and you're one of our patrons, get in touch through Patreon. Uh, and come and see the boat and come and have coffee with us. Um, so, uh, but it, I'm always prepared to down tools and stop for a chat, even if it's just talking to you guys from the top of the wall or whatever. And if the boat's in a fit state to visit, uh, you, then you're, you're very, very welcome. Apart from that, thanks to the guys who've uh, contributed through coffee and PayPal and um, all of that kind of good stuff and super thanks. And uh, thanks to you for watching the video and liking, which I'm assuming you have and leaving us a comment, which I'm pretty certain you have, and I'll see you guys next week. Bye-bye.